Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Azrock's all new Nook Box. Now they've actually got a few more coming out on the horizon, but they were kind enough to send over this first model. This is known as the Azrock Nook Box 155H. And as the name designates, you can kind of guess what CPU we have here. And I've actually been really excited about their new 2024 line of Nook Boxes. And keep in mind, you can actually get these in a short version or the tall version. I've got the tall version here, and basically the main difference is going to be that we can add a 2.5 inch drive to the bottom of this unit. On the short version, there's just not enough room, but they do have the same exact I.O. and the same cooling system. Not much has changed here in the overall design from last year's Nook box. We've basically got the same exterior, a couple different ports here, and we've got a much more powerful CPU and GPU combination with this mini PC. Inside of the packaging, along with the new Nook box, we've got a mounting system. We can easily mount this to the back of our monitor underneath our desk. We've also got cabling for that 2.5 inch drive we can add in the bottom and a 120 watt power supply. With a lot of these new mini PCs hitting the market, I've noticed that a lot of these companies are kind of swapping over to USB Type-C power delivery. Personally, I would much rather have a barrel jack, and luckily, ASRock did keep that here with the 120 watt PSU. When it comes to I.O. with the new Nook box, up front, as you can see, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full-size USB 3.2 port, and we've got two USB-C ports here. One of these is 3.2, but both of them will support display out. And the other one up here is actually Thunderbolt 4 with 40 gig protocol. So connecting an eGPU or really fast storage is super simple with this PC. Not much at all going on around the sides here, but moving around back, we've got our power input, two more USB 3.2 ports, dual HDMI and dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet. In total, we can do four displays out utilizing both of these HDMI ports around back and both of those USB type C ports up front. Most of these units from ASRock do come bare bones, but there are third party companies out there kind of fully configuring them out of the box for you. With this, I'm going to be adding a one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD and 32 gigabytes of dual channel DDR5 at 5600 megatransfers per second. Really simple to get to the internals. We've got four screws on the bottom, and as you can see, this is going to act as a heatsink for the SSDs and that RAM. Really nice design. We've also got enough room in here for a 2.5 inch drive. I would suggest an SSD, but you could do a mechanical if you want to. And yeah, going dual channel with these mini PCs is definitely the way to go. I've got two sticks of crucial RAM, both 16 gigs at 5600 megatransfers per second. We'll just go ahead and pop them in here. Another thing to keep in mind is this actually supports up to 96 gigabytes of RAM utilizing two 48 gig sticks, so that high density RAM. It is a bit more expensive and I'd say I'd be fine with 32 up to 64, but it does do up to 96. And once we've got these installed and the SSD, it looks a little something like this. Again, that bottom plate is going to cool everything inside. It's going to make contact with those thermal pads that come pre-installed. ASRock is offering this new Nook box with a few different configurations, but I've got the highest end model here. It's powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. 16 cores, 22 threads, and with this we get 6 performance cores up to 4.8 GHz, 8 efficiency cores up to 3.8 GHz, and 2 low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. And of course, with these new Core Ultra chips, we get a more powerful iGPU. This is their new Intel Arc iGPU. This one will clock up to 2.25 GHz, and we've got 8 XE cores. We can add up to 96 GB of SODEM DDR5 at 5600 megatransfers per second. And given that we're working with such a small form factor, we can actually add a bunch of storage here. We've got one 2280 Gen 4 NVMe slot. We've got another 2240 Gen 4 NVMe slot. And we can also add that 2.5 SSD in the bottom. Also has Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro on this machine. All right, so first things first, with these ASRock mini PCs, if you want the best performance out of them, we need to get into the BIOS. So while it's booting up, you can press delete on your keyboard. It'll bring us right here. With this, it's no different because we need to go to advanced, CPU configuration, and our CPU operating mode, we need to set this from normal to performance mode. Now this will run it up to around 54 watts. In normal mode, around 35. We can definitely extract more performance here, obviously, in performance mode. There are some other settings in here, like disabling some of the E cores, P cores, and even those low power cores. 
but we don't have any kind of TDP adjustment except for that right there, which is just going to be our normal or performance mode. Would highly suggest going to performance. Fan speed will increase, so the noise will increase just by a bit. But once you've got it enabled, we need to go ahead and save changes and exit. Now we can get a good look at what's going on here, and there's a few things I wanted to show you. As you can see, we've got that Core Ultra 7 155H, 16 cores, 22 threads, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and of course those Intel Arc graphics. With the Arc graphics, definitely recommend updating the GPU driver. I'm on the latest at the time of making this video. And since we're working with an integrated GPU from our performance section here in the Intel Arc control panel, we really don't have any power management that we can use. I really do hope this changes in the future. I'd like to have a little control over the iGPU, like kind of dedicating some more wattage to the GPU as opposed to the CPU. We've got a lot of cores that we need to power here. And before we jump into some benchmarks in gaming, I wanted to show you. As you can see, with core temp, we've got our power right here. This is going to be our CPU package power. If I stress out all 16 of those cores with uh, CPU-Z, you can see this jumps up to around 62 watts, but it will come back down to around 54. Not too bad. I mean, it actually works out really well like this, and we've got a lot more power than most of these other PCs with that 155H, so we can really see how this thing performs. And when it comes down to it, using this as an everyday PC is going to work out just fine. You want to do some email checking, web browsing, 4K video playback. This chip has more than enough power to handle it. But I wanted to see the gaming performance, at least in this video. And the first thing I did was run some benchmarks. First one is 3D Mark Fire Strike coming in with an 8081. And with these synthetic benchmarks on these new Core Ultra chips, we're actually seeing some really high scores when you compare them to AMD. But driver optimizations are really what need to be had for these chips to perform well in real world gaming. I also ran 3D Mark Time Spy coming in with a 3630. And remember, we are in performance mode. These aren't bad at all, but again, they're synthetic scores. So let's check out some real gaming on this machine. First one we have here is the built-in benchmark for Red Dead Redemption 2, 1080p, low settings. So we're not completely low. From the little slider there, we're four clicks up, still on low. And at the end here, we had an average of 46 FPS, maximum of 57, and a pretty low of 10. Yeah, this is something that I've been seeing a lot with these ARC drivers. Um, and I'm on the latest driver right now, which did increase performance for a lot of games. If you go over to Intel's website, you can check out their change log. But next up, we've got PAL World 900p, low. This one hasn't been performing very well on any of these iGPUs. Basically, you will need to mod this game to add XESS, which is Intel scaling technology, or even FSR. We've only got access to DLSS, kind of stock bare bones. If I was to install that FSR mode, we could get a lot more out of it. But even at 900p low, I was thinking we'd be on up in the mid 50s. Spider-Man Remastered 1080p low with XESS set to performance. This is one of those games that's a bit all over the place for these iGPUs, be it Intel or AMD, but it's been doing a lot better with recent driver updates to AMD. We're seeing about the same kind of performance here, but a lot steadier. So I'd say right now, 1080p, low with FSR set to performance, we can average around 67. On this, you can see it does go up, but we've got a lot of those dips under 60. Here's Forza Horizon 5, and this is just one of those games I always like to test on these iGPUs because we always see some really decent performance out of most everything out there. 1080p medium with no scaling. We got an average of 73 FPS by the end of my run here. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077 1080p low XESS set to performance. We've had a lot of issues with ARC in this game, and I think that's what's really holding these ARC iGPUs back, just driver optimizations. Now, there's no doubt that Intel has been doing a great job kind of updating everything, but it's kind of hard for them to go across the board with every single game we want to play here. But I thought by now we'd be seeing much better performance here, because on the AMD 780M iGPU at the same settings, except FSR set to performance instead of XESS, we can see an average of around 74 FPS. So basically double the performance there. The last thing I wanted to take a look at was total system power consumption. And I only tested this in performance mode from the BIOS. Keep in mind, normal mode, it will be much lower. 
But at idle, we're at 11 watts from the wall, and I'm using a kilowatt meter, so this is total power draw from this mini PC. Average gaming, 51 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to hit while maxing out all 16 cores and that iGPU was 73 watts. Personally, was hoping to see a little better performance out of that iGPU, especially given that we can actually take the wattage up quite high when you compare it to laptops with the same chip on the market right now. Power management definitely needs to be tweaked. I think we need a little more wattage over to that iGPU, but then again, we've still got those 16 cores we need to power here. There are a few more things I'd like to test with this down the road, so keep an eye out if you're interested in seeing a little bit of AI performance out of this thing. Of course, we've got that NPU with the 155H, but that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you've got any questions or you want to learn a little more about this ASRock Nookbox 155H, I'll leave some links down below. And also, let me know if you want to see anything else running on this mini PC. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.